Hey everybody, Barry here again. I'm ready to start cutting. I'm ready to start removing things that doesn't need to be here. Like 24 and a half inches out of this frame. Rear cab mount is gonna go. This cross member is gonna go. This front cab mount actually has to be cut off because when I move all this ahead, the front cab mount is gonna be about where this one is maybe a head a little bit further or something like that. So I need to take a few measurements and stuff between this cab mount and that one, because when this comes off, of course I have to put it back on and measure out how I'm gonna be cutting this, whether it's on a 45 degree angle or whether I step it like that. Because I need to cut this mount off, the first thing I'm gonna do is measure so I know where to put it back. I'm just gonna measure from the rear of this mount, the front one, to the rear of the rear mount, and it's exactly 43 inches. The cab mount is just below flush, and I'll see how much that is now. To see how low this cab mount has to be, I'm going to put this flat edge across the frame here, and then measure how far down until this hole right here, so that on both sides, I can have an accurate representation of how far down it is. If I measured tight to the weld here, or if I measured halfway down the taper here, I'm gonna get different measurements. So this hole is on both sides on each cab mount, so I know that I'm measuring in the exact same place. All right, with the square edge of my ruler, I'm just gonna measure from right here, and it is just over half an inch, which will be 9 sixteenths. I'm gonna cut this weld in as close as I can to the frame here so that I don't remove any meat from the mount itself. And I'm gonna cut it right on in around here. It's gonna be kind of a hard spot to cut, especially with this little bracket here, but I should be able to get the grinder in there. If not, I'll make my first cut and then run the sawzall the whole way around. Doesn't matter if this one comes apart in 25 pieces because I'm not gonna reuse it. The cab mounts are off here. Here's the rear cab mount, front cab mount. It came off really well. You can see that it didn't leave very much metal there at all. Basically just the weld. Here actually cleaned up pretty well also. Uh, got into the frame a little bit right there, but nothing some welding won't uh, fix up. And yeah, I got in there a little bit, but nothing serious. I just tried to cut the weld where I could. The old plasma cutter came in handy quite a few times there. And same over on this side. Nicked the frame there a little bit, but I think most of this can be removed anyway. And here is where the rear cab mount came off. So I'm gonna buff this down with this 36 grit flap disc. These are amazing. They're so abrasive. They'll take down a weld in just seconds. Let's get it cleaned up and have another look. Here's your warning to leave the guard on your grinder. Don't be dumb like me. I got lucky. 
Well, I don't know where the guard is. Maybe I'll just be more careful. That was a brand new glove too. Well, here's a two day update. I can't really bend my finger yet, but well, it's starting to heal. Got it all grinded down. Ground down? Yeah, probably. Anyway, it's all flat. Look at that. And I was trying to figure out why it just would not grind. The uh, 36 grit wheel just did nothing. This thing, this is an abrasive grinding wheel. When I was grinding the welds, it just would not move. Like it was just colliding over top. And I was like, is, did they use the adamantium welding rods to weld this together? Because it's, uh, it's not knocking it down at all. But watch this, look, rusty frame. Apparently that's just dirt on top of factory rubberized undercoat. Look at that. That's actually rubber. It plugged my grinder wheel completely full of rubber. <laughs> that's a really good sign though. Look, rubberized undercoat. That is amazing. That's a good sign. That's a good sign that a lot of this looks flaky and scaly. And, you know, obviously I don't think there's any undercoat left back here, but... Look, that is, that's, that's, that's flakiness. That's like, that's undercoat too, I think. It looks like it. Sweet. Very, very sweet. Oh my gosh, I cannot wait to get this thing shortened up. This is the frame that I should have waited for. This is the frame that I thought the Escalade frame was. Not so much. So while I'm here, I'd like to see pretty much where that frame tips up. It looks like it's gonna be pretty much right where this cross member is. So let's take our handy dandy straight edge. See when we start getting a gap. Yup. Right where that pipe is. Just about in front of it actually. So I think that's a really good reference point right there because I was concerned or trying to figure out where I should make my reference line to not cut back here further. And that's a good spot. So let's see if we have 24 inches between here and the torsion bar mounts there. I will be vacuuming up that frame also, by the way. So for now, this is gonna be our rough draft. What I'll do, just to make it even, I'm gonna put this chisel right between the pipe and my square. Like I said, just a reference, nothing definite. I'm not gonna be cutting on this line, of course. Now we'll measure from there and see where 24 and a half inches is. Oh boy, we're close. We are very, very close. 24 and a half inches. Yep. Right there. I missed that shot altogether, but here's 24 and a half inches. It is basically right on the torsion bar mount. So this is gonna be a bit of a difficult one by the looks of it. <laughs> this is gonna be fun. How do I go about this, I wonder? I actually wouldn't. That was rude. Thank you. Hmm. There is an option. Uh, I don't know how I feel about it, but it'll work. And that is to come up here next to the mount, go just above the mount and go in, say four inches and then up. That way I still have my step. And back here, I can go on this line. It's a very hard line to see. Go up, same distance, ahead to the, say four inches and up. And those pieces will just sort of 
Tetris together. Weld it there. The only thing I don't like is that eliminates the possibility of me boxing the frame now. I can't go back because then the frame sweeps up and it's definitely going to mess with the angle of the frame or at least I'll have a gap. Now I might have a little bit of forgiveness and be able to go back a couple inches that will lose me that cross member, which I actually wouldn't mind having, but it's probably going to hit the floor of the cab anyway. So I'm, I'm still kind of lost. I don't know. I'm going to size it up a little bit more. I don't mind going up by the torsion bar mount. That's not really a big deal. I would like to be able to box it in. If I ever need to replace torsion bar mounts uh, or torsion bar bushings, like these go bad. These go bad. Actually, that one's cracked. You can see. I don't know if that's actually bad or not, but oh yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it needs to be replaced. Lift kit problems, boy. Lift kit problems for sure. So I'd like to be able to replace the torsion bar mounts. Hmm. 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 Yeah. Just another problem to solve. Before I do anything else, I'm just going to sort of grind this down, clean it up. Back here, same thing. Now that I know where my, uh, um, what am I trying to say? Now that I know where relatively where my cuts are going to be, I'll clean it up on both sides. Vacuum out the whole frame front to back as much as I can and then clean the floor. There's nothing worse than a messy workspace, especially when you're trying to get in under the frame and size it up and look at it and you're crawling around in dirt. I don't like that. So time to clean it up. It's crazy how much prep work is required to do something like this. I told my wife, I'll be gone in a couple hours, no big deal. Should have it pretty much caught and tacked back together by then. It's been three hours. I cut off four brackets, pretty much. <laughs> Cleaned up the frame a little bit. I vacuumed out the frame. It actually looks really good up here. In the back, we've got a little bit of scaliness going on, but it's still the full thickness of the frame, which is really nice. Uh, hammer test, I will do, but, you know, that's just beat up most of the scale. Yeah. Keep your workspace neat and tidy. Keep it clean, free of clutter. I just got my tools laid out for tomorrow when I come back. So I have everything that I need. But I am absolutely beat. So I don't want to start cutting, measuring, doing math when I'm this tired, when I'm this dirty and in need of a shower because I know I'm going to mess something up. So I'd rather leave it here on a really high note where I have a lot of work done. I got a lot of prep done tomorrow or the next day or whenever I decide to come in, I can just draw my pattern, trace it with the grinder, Make sure a frame, of course, is leveled up, jacked up, blocks, all that stuff. Cut out a chunk, move it ahead, and weld it. Prep is 90% of the job. The other 10% is the actual work. So I'm really, really happy with what I've done tonight. This is not the end of the video. This is just the end of my night. See you in like two seconds. Well, now's the time after the garage is all cleaned up to start making my marks so I can cut. This is the nerve wracking part. Oh, hello little friend, where'd you go? Little bird's been hanging out in the shop since yesterday. <laughs> I hope he can find his way out. I had the door open all day. Hello birdie. You gonna oversee this operation? 
Don't poop on the frame, please. Contaminate the welds. Yeah. All right. So, uh, well, nothing left to do it, but to do it, I guess. took me a second to get my head around the measurements. I started measuring here first when I should have started here because, you know, this is staying. So I measured about a half inch away from this uh, cross member here. And when I say about, I mean, I put my marker up against it, slid my square against like that, and then mark my line. You can see it right there. That way I can do the same thing with the marker and the square on the other side. Here to here is 24 and a half inches. And that gives me room to get away from the bracket inside. And I still have room, like say here, to fish plate and everything. And what I'm gonna do, I didn't really explain it well before, is make a plate that's the whole size of this, but cut out the holes around here. That way, I can still get at these rivets because I know I'm going to need to replace the torsion bar mounts. I can still get at these and it'll still be boxed here. And like, I don't know if I'm going to box it the whole way inside, but I'll box it to wherever I get. Because when I need to change these torsion bar mounts, this bar or this cross member needs room to go into the frame here so that it can come out of the frame there and sort of tip down or swing sideways and I don't want to get jammed up so I'll box it probably say to here or something back just to add a little bit of strength inside the frame but that looks pretty good gotta steady myself with my foot <laughs> it looks pretty good there and of course the measurements up and down here are the same and now I'll go and duplicate it on that side what I did to get my measurement here is laid my ruler right on top of the rivets. That way I've got a mark there that goes right across the rivets. And I can do the same thing on the other side. It's nice to have some static marks like here with the ruler and right there with the marker and the square. That way I can make this as my first reference line and I don't have to measure off a hole there and be out a sixteenth of an inch or, you know, measure off of this hole here with a square and that is just a lot of pain. So, you know, the marker and the square are not going to change. And this side is done. That was pretty good there. I find these little bolts and brackets are getting in my way for trying to measure. So I gotta cut those off and then I'll re-measure and make sure I hit a mark wrong right there. That's why they say measure twice apparently because this is the second time I measured and it's correct. I gotta go right through a bolt there which is for this ABS bracket, not a big deal. Back here, down we go. And the same there. So I'll get this thing blocked up leveled up and start cutting. Jeez, I almost forgot. Uh, Matt suggested I do a hammer test on this frame, so I suppose I should do it before I start cutting. Looks good to me. Next step, level the frame up. I don't know right now if the suspension, if the tires wearing, if the torsion bars are all level and aligned. So I need to level the front suspension. I'll use a level, like a forefoot, across the frame rails here, you know, across here, that way, and make sure the front, uh, I should be able to get a level across, actually. Yep, I can get it across right here, and I'll also level the center of the frame rails this way. 
So I'm going to need some jack stands and a few minutes with the handy dandy jack and we'll check back. Now in saying that, I should add that I'm going to leave the back uh, able to be rolled so that uh, this will stay static. When I get it leveled out and cut off, all I got to do is roll that frame ahead, lay it right down in place, weld it back together. And I should explain here that the reason I cut it this way instead of in under is so that there will be a top cap on this frame rail here that will go along and sit right here. And that way, gravity, of course, will just hold the frame right there for me, put a couple clamps on it, and then weld without having to sort of jack the frame up to it. So that's just a little tip. So I know this is going to sound kind of funky, but right now the bubble is right over toward this right line right here. That's on the front. In the middle, right over on the edge of that right line. And all the way to the back of the back. Or right over on the edge of that right line again. So the chassis doesn't have any swiftiness going on there. It doesn't have to be perfectly level for me to weld it. Don't get angry. I know, perfect world, chassis table, all that fun. You know, it'd be nice to have it perfectly level. But we've got differing weights here with things. Of course, you know, we've got a transfer case that hangs to the left. We've got an ABS block over here, you know, all that kinds of stuff. I'm sure the engine isn't perfectly balanced left to right with this big old aluminum bracket on this side. Torsion bars may not be squared up perfectly but it's even so that means that it may be dipped a half a degree this way or that way whichever way the bubble leads but they're all even i'm happy with that what i'm gonna do is put stands in under the frame here and here and i'm just gonna just just take the weight of the frame so that it stays at the exact same height that it's at now when i cut it Obviously, if I cut it as it is, it would just go clunk. But if I just hold the um, weight of the frame on the front, I can just slide that frame right on ahead, lay it right down into place. The frame rail is straight and flat all the way across there with the four foot level. So I can be sure 100% that my frame isn't you know, V-shape by running my level across the frame rail when I get it moved ahead and tacked together. Of course, when the truck is put together, when the cab is on it, when the bed is on, when the turbo's on, fuel tank, all that fun, it's gonna sit differently because turbo's gonna be on the passenger side, fuel tank with 80 pounds of gas in it is gonna be on the driver's side. Muffler, passenger side. So it's never going to be, the bare frame is a bad spot to level up. And I'm not trying to justify laziness or anything like that here. If I have to level the front now, the passenger side has to come up, I'll say even a quarter inch, half inch. When I move the back ahead, now the back wants to sit where it is. So now I got to drive up that uh, quarter inch on the passenger side. And now I'm getting into variables that are kind of annoying because I got to put shims in under the tire or something. It's really dumb. So as long as it's even, I'm happy. Uh, if it's down on one side a little bit, when I get the truck done, I'll put another half a turn on that torsion bar bolt and it's level again. That's the nice thing about adjustability. I've never seen one of these trucks that are absolutely perfectly level anyway. Oh, look, a butterfly. So many friends in here today. Uh, let's get Jack and Cotton. Let's jack up the truck and cut the frame off.
here's the cuts. I cut the center out and the long lines and that right up over the top. I didn't cut these edges in here because I don't want to cut past the corner. So I'm going to use the saws off for that. And the frame is a little bit, you know, I guess it's got side load on it from these cross members and the torsion bar mounts and stuff. So it's going to want to move a little bit, but that's nothing the clamp won't take care of. Same thing here. The frame on the rear went inward a little bit as it did the same here. The rear part of the frame went inward, but no, nothing serious. Not a big deal. It didn't go dong and go real freaky on me. I cut the rear off first because I can just roll that back a little bit, move it out of the way, and that way I can cut the front off because the front, of course, is static and it'll be a lot easier for me to cut it. There we go look at that look at that uh yeah the frame is a little bit i'm gonna say wider <laughs> on the front here it seems like it wanted to pull the front out rather than pulling the rear inward but oh don't want to break the level be hard to trust that one after it fell on the floor wouldn't it so let's just lay this one right out of the way for now Look at that. Look how much meat there is on this frame. Wow. That is wild. What good shape this is in. This is 10 times thicker. <laughs> I don't even know if that's an exaggeration than the Escalade frame was that I cut and extended the first time. Wow. Oh God, I'm so happy with that. Awesome. Awesome sauce. So happy. Lots of Lots and lots of meat to weld to. The frame is double layered right back here. I don't know if you can see it or not, but there's almost like another channel inside the frame there. So that adds strength to the rear. Uh, and that stops about right here, which I'm very glad about because I don't, uh, I think that there might be some sort of rubberized coating or something in between that because the last time I welded that, it just globbing up and it made a big state luckily this doesn't have it so on to the front So what do we think? What do we think? I think it's really nice. Lots of meat, lots and lots of meat to weld to. That is awesome. I would like to say it's eighth of an inch thick, but I think it might be just a shade thicker. Wow, 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 very nice. I know I'm welding and I have a seam now close to the torsion bar mount here, but this doesn't actually hold any weight. I guess it just holds pressure that way. Like it has rotational, torsional force, I guess. That was not very good. Again, looks very good. Lots and lots of meat to weld to. Up here, same thing. I've got one spot to repair on this frame and that's it right there. That's not bad at all. And look, there's all kinds of material out here. So this piece, that was only like 16th of an inch anyway from the factory. Not a big deal. I'd say it was probably there to stop stress cracks from happening out here, but I will make a new piece to fit down here and weld it together. It's funny because look over here. Just as thick as it ever was. It's funny how like three feet that way and it's rusty. 
peculiar. Nothing left to do now, but to put it back together. That got cleaned up a lot better. Couldn't really get the grinder in here very well without damage and stuff, so I did that and cleaned up a little bit. That's a lot cleaner than it was, so I think we're ready to put it back together now. Keeps wanting to roll away on me, so I'm gonna to have to put some something in behind the rear tires there and allow it to settle, but it fits pretty well. Oh, we got a frame. It is a full, full frame again. Look how stumpy it is. Let's get back here so we can get a good look at it. Look how stumpy it is. That's amazing. <laughs> so <laughs> it almost looks like the cab mount is going to be pretty much right where this one was, or at least close to it. Welds came out okay. The welder was really getting on my nerves. I was having a lot of trouble with it. The wire wasn't wanting to come out, but I got it fixed and welded it over and everything. Not pretty, but I am the Flex Ninja. So when I make my uh, fish plates, I think I'm gonna go around here, back here, and then come right behind this cross member also and uh, surround all that and come back here. That way I've got this covered, this whole Z here covered, and it doesn't have um, a stress point right here or right there because there's gonna be a plate uh, welded the whole way around there. As for the inside, I really don't have any room on the inside and uh, it's, it's gonna be very difficult actually to even get that torsion bar cross member up out of the way enough to put bushings in it. But um, 
I think they're actually not too hard to change. I've changed them before. I just don't remember. It's been a while. But hey, we got a frame. That is so sick. Really, really hoping that uh, cab is not going to hit that cross member because... I mean, it doesn't seem to add a lot, but hey, it looks cool. <laughs> I was going to say I could use a, a loop down the bottom and make a drive shaft loop, but the drive shaft doesn't start till probably right here. So what's it going to stop? Nothing. Absolutely zero. Probably get in the way more than anything. But uh, yeah, this is, this is very nice. I'm very happy with it. Really, really happy with it. I'm so excited. The frame is now shorter and able to accept a single cab and a short bed. And it's solid. It is solid. Look at that. How cool does that look? 24 and a half inches shorter in 24 hours. This side came out nice. I got to clean it up a little bit, you know, wire wheel it. Here was me trying to uh, get that wire to spit out angrily. So I'll do the same thing over here. Come around the back side of this. All the way around here. Toward the front. Weld it all the way around. Very good. Very good. So this is going to be it for how to short, chop, cut, modify your frame. Legally. What do you think? Let me know what you would have done. If this was the worst or best idea, you know, with the little bit of space that I had because it was tight. Fitz's Fabrications, uh, best fabricating genius magician of all time, came in and gave me a suggestion that I wish I could have used. And that was cutting where the frame meets the front half of the frame and just sort of sliding it right back up in the same place. But it was, it was way too much work for me with the limited amount of tools and ability, let's be honest, that I have. In the next video, I will show how to fish plate the frame using my own little method. Might be different than you do it, might be different than your buddy does it, your neighbor does it, the machinist down the road, everybody does it differently, everybody's right, everybody's also wrong. So, criticize me. So I hope this helps somebody. If you're shortening a frame, don't let your head get into it, don't overthink it, it's just metal. Make sure you measure several times, even after you cut, measure again, reference both sides, and always make sure that you're absolutely ready to weld before you start welding, because it's kind of annoying to have to cut tacks and reset stuff, and good luck with it, and have fun. So thanks for checking out the video, thanks to my YouTube members, patrons, and subscribers. If you want to check out my Patreon, it's patreon.com slash stationroadratrods. My YouTube members link is down here. Thanks for watching. Have a great day, everybody.